Hello, today we're going to talk about filters. So filters are a tool that you can use when you've got a big set of data and you want to make it more presentable. You want to make it smaller. Um, so here I'm looking at about 100 rows of data and I don't want to look at 100 rows of data. I only want to look at the relevant rows of data. So I'm going to do four scenarios for you. Well, this will be pretty quick. I'm not covering all the tools that I possibly could show you. But uh, I'll show you kind of how to get started with this. So if you want to work with filters, you're going to head over to the Data tab and then just turn on Filters. Notice where my uh, cursor is. I'm in G17. It doesn't. Those are all good places. That's a bad place. If you just click anywhere in the data, click Filter, it'll probably figure out where your table is. Um, you can turn it on and off like that. If you click over here, you're going to get filters over there, and that's not going to be right. If you have some strange little range selected and you turn on filters, you're going to get filters in the wrong place. The most common mistake with filters is people will manually select a range like that. That was wrong. Do you see how my filters are in the wrong row? Your filters need to be up in the uh, title row. Um, so usually you can get away with just clicking filter. It'll figure out what they are and then you're set to use filters. You can also get filters by using a table, but that's not actually a filter thing. That's just, that's a table thing. Um, all right, so let's say I wanna look at this data and I only wanna see Victorian homes. So you gotta figure out what filter do I want? That's gonna be style. Now, the uh, bad way of doing this is checking boxes like this. You can do that and it does work. Notice that now I've narrowed it down to pretty much a screen of data. Look at those blue row numbers with gaps. You see nothing's gone, things are just hidden. You can also tell that it's filtered because it has that little icon on it. You can clear filters by clicking on that. Now I said that was the bad way of doing it. Let me show you the better way of doing it. The better way is to use these tools here. Sure, it's gonna be a little more work. If we're doing Victorian, I could do equals Victorian, begins with Vic, ends with Ian contains, you've got a lot of tools here. These are excellent tools and they're not hard to use. So I would just use those. This is a lot more work than what I did a minute ago, but there's a lot of scenarios where you need that. All right, I got to the same place, a little more work, but I'm telling you, if there's one thing you take away from this video before I clear this style here, is uh, use the, the filters, those things, not those. I can't um, really convince you in this video that there's a good reason to use those other tools, but uh, just trust me, there are scenarios where you need it. This data is just not that interesting. Uh, next, filter the data such that only homes with greater than 1,500 square feet are displayed. So, where are we going? I'm going here. So this is a good one. Like, I don't think you want to go check a bunch of boxes. You could. You mean you really could do it. It would take you a couple of minutes, but instead I'm going to go number of filters, I'm going to go greater than. I know a minute ago I said I wasn't going to have a good example of why you want to use these tools. Oh, there are better ones. There are better there are better examples than that out there. Just trust me. And now I hid some of the rows. It, it you yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell that it happened, but it did happen. I'm going to remove that filter again. Filter the data such that only two bedroom condos are displayed. So this one's more interesting because there's two things going on here. So I just got to make a decision. I'm going to go uh, in the order that it's written, so I'll go bedrooms equals two, and we're also going to do condos, so I got a filter on bedroom, and I'm going to put a filter on style, and now all I see are two bedroom condos. That's a good example of a filter because it's uh, really narrowed it down, and that's what these are good for when you've got a kind of an intimidating data set and you want to make it a more manageable one, filters are your friend. And I've got one more. I'm just trying to go through a variety of different filters here. You can see what's in there. They're pretty well labeled. Um, filter the data such that uh, homes that have been on the market for between 100 and 200 days are displayed. So it's going to be days on market. Uh, I don't think you want to go checking boxes here, but you could. Instead, I'm going to go between. Uh, the one thing I didn't really get into here was top 10. Top 10 can be top 5, top 25, and it could be bottom. You can flip that. I guess I'll probably throw that in here. Um, so 100, oops, so 100 and 200, and now you're seeing what I asked for. 
Now, I don't have a prompt for this, but let's say I wanted to, because there's one tool I think is worth uh, pointing out. And let's say uh, I want to see uh, the top 10 homes by asking price, or let's go top five. So I'd go asking price, number filters. I don't see top five, but if you go in here, you see it's top and bottom, and you can spin this up or down to whatever you want. All right, so like I said, I can't get into all the filters, but that's most of the tools that you're going to need. And you can apply multi-levels of filters. And oftentimes these get brought up in the context of tables because tables happen to have filters on them. But uh, as far as filters go, that's filters. And I hope you understand them better than you did five minutes and 43 seconds ago. Thanks for watching.